Hey, hello YouTube. <laughs> okay. I will share the the uh, the chat uh, the link. Okay. To this. Okay. Hmm. Just start with this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, oh, do we need the uh, you to open the this session? No need. I think. Oh. <laughs> Just okay. go on. Okay. <laughs> Don't make too formal. Okay. Okay. Actually, Bu Sylvia and Bu Kotrin is already here, yeah. Have already. Okay. Um. Now let's start. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the good time today. And first of all, I would like to say welcome to everyone for attending our practitioner's lecture series 15, Listening, with the title How to Develop Listening Skill in English, Challenges and Solutions. Our speaker today is Mr. Andrew Hun. Andrew Hunt. Andrew Hunt. Is, is that correct? <laughs> well, please, please call me Andy. Oh, and, oh, yeah, okay. Mr. Andy from EF English First. Thank you for joining our event today. Uh, My pleasure. Thank yeah, you Mr. for inviting me. Mr. Andy, we really appreciate your time here to be here. And we also have Ibu Dini as a Secretary Jurusan and also Ibu Sylvia and Ibu Kotrini. Welcome, Ibu. Ibu, Ibu. <laughs> So this event is guest lecture session for listening one course and then uh, for this for the first semester student. And uh, we should start our sharing session with Mr. Andy right now. So before that, I will read Mr. Andy's brief CV first. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so this is what Sari said to me. <laughs> Ma, Mr. And Andy Han is the Senior Academic Manager of EF English First, East Java, Bali, and Lombok. He comes from England but has lived in Hong Kong, Thailand, America, and Indonesia. He has a Master in TSL from University of Illinois and has been an English teacher, trainer, and academic manager for the past 24 years. For the last 10 years, Andy has been designing and running teacher workshops and he has produced a number of training and activity materials for English teachers. He lives in Surabaya with his uh, beautiful wife <laughs> and they like to spend time walking, reading, traveling and eating delicious Asian food. Uh, and Mr. Andy loves Indonesia and his favorite food is 100% nasi padang. <laughs> Of course. Of course. But okay, it's not so, good for my cholesterol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be, be very careful with the nasi padang for the cholesterol. For this session, Mr. Andy, we have around uh, one hour to present uh, your lecture and then followed by question and answer session. And for the students, you can give question by asking directly later to Mr. Andy or by writing the question in chat box and remember uh, class uh, students for the rules yeah uh, okay so, sorry okay 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 uh, now let's have uh, our sharing session with mr andy mr andy time is yours Thank you, Buddha. Thank you, Budini. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see morning, you. Sir. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very honored to be with you today. So my name is Andy. My my wife writes a very good bio, so she makes me sound good. <laughs> so I, yeah, I come from England, but I live in Surabaya, so quite far from you, but I've been I've traveled around Indonesia a lot, so I know Padang, I know Sumatra very well. So thank you for being with us today. Um, today, obviously, we're going to do some, we'll be talking about developing listening skills, and we will ask your students to be involved. We'll be using the chat box a lot. We have some activities for you, okay? So you ready? So if I could ask Faye to start our PowerPoint. Uh... There we go.
There. Can everybody see that okay, Budesi? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So how to develop your listening skills in English, challenge solutions. So, okay, we can go to the next one. I'll show you what we're going to do today. So we're going to discuss listening needs. What do we need to be good listeners? We're also going to quickly look at the challenges of listening. We're actually going to learn about rhythm today. We're going to learn about how English goes up and down, and that will help us learn some strategies for listening. And then we're going to have a little practice, like a test, but practice. Okay, Faith? So before we start then, I would like to see everybody. So we will stop sharing the screen so I can see everyone. Okay, hi everyone. So as we all know, listening and communication is about 60 or 70% body language. And now we teach, communicate, work online our facial expressions and our gestures are even more important to understand, okay? So I want you to follow me, are you ready? I want to see your happy face. Very nice. I want to see your angry face. I want to see your very shocked face. Now you're very sleepy, very hungry. Now you see somebody that you love. Now you see somebody that you don't like. Now, last one, you are eating very spicy food. Perfect, thank you. Look at those gestures. So Faye, can we go back to the PowerPoint? Now I feel much warmer. Okay, next one. Okay, so obviously body language, gestures, facial expressions are so important. And we can actually understand without hearing. We can understand people a lot just by watching them. So it's important to look at people. So, okay, Faye, next. And the next. So I'd like to ask you guys, when do you listen to English? You can type in the chat box. When do you actually listen to English? What do you do to listen to English? So I'll give you about 45 seconds to type in the chat box. When do you listen to English? When do you hear English? Ready? Let's go. And you cannot say when I'm listening to Mr. Andy talking. Songs, movies. I think a lot of music, movies, songs, YouTube. There seems to be lots of entertainment here. Movies, YouTube, music, song, music, 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 speaking. Okay, yeah, communication, movie, movie, video, talking with friends. Okay, so communication. Excellent, thank you. So there's many times we all listen to English, obviously. So it seems that maybe for a lot of Indonesian students I know, they start listening to English through entertainment, YouTube, movies, TV shows, and music, obviously. So, okay, next. So when we listen to English, what do we listen for? Your, your examples were for entertainment. So when we listen, we listen for gist. So Budesi, mm -hmm. what do we mean by gist? Gist is in, in, in Indonesian or it's a clue, yeah, it's a clue. Yeah, so the clue, like the main idea. Yes. So we don't need to understand everything. We're listening for the idea. But we also listen for details. So if somebody gives you the time for movies, you are listening for specific time. You're listening for details. What time is the exam tomorrow? You need the, the details of the time. And we mainly listen for meaning. We need to listen to understand what we hear. What is the song about? What is the movie about? What is Budesi telling me? What is the meaning of what we hear? Okay, Faye. And what is the purpose of listening, so Faye? So we listen so we can reply to somebody. So how are you? I'm fine. We listen to communicate so we can have conversations. We listen to learn. You guys listen to your lecturers. You listen to lectures. 
You listen because you want to learn something. We also listen because we want to tell people what we heard, either speaking or writing. And you guys obviously listen for enjoyment. We listen to songs, we listen to music, we listen to TV, okay? We also listen to instructions as well. Okay, Faye? Okay. So, what are the challenges of listening in English? And again, I'd quickly like you to put some of the challenges you face into the chat box. What are some of the challenges to be able to listen and hear in English? Let's say 45 seconds again. Speaker is too fast, I'm sorry. I will slow down. <laughs> but that's a good point. Speed is a problem, is a challenge. What are the challenges? That's a good, un unfamiliar vocabulary, so unknown phrase. Accent, that's a good one. Difficult grammar, yeah, complex. Oh, your students are so good. <laughs> thank you, thank you, student. <laughs> yeah, well done, thank you. So yeah, Faye? Yeah, so I said, same as you, I said speed. Speed is, um, a big challenge, but we're going to look at speed today and we don't need to understand everything. You guys said unfamiliar vocabulary, unfamiliar phrases, that relates to context. Sometimes we don't know what the person is talking about or what we're hearing because we don't know the context, the vocabulary, the meaning. Um, it's often very difficult to listen without visuals. So my generation, we listened obviously to music from uh, records with no videos to watch, no MTV when I was young. So now we listen, does anyone like podcasts? So podcasts, we listen without visuals and it's actually can be quite tricky. Um, everyone has different styles of speaking. Yeah, We all speak in different ways. We use different expressions, that can be a challenge. And for you younger generation students, Millennials, can we say? You, you have grown up with technology, with so much exposure to the world and many things. So you have social media, you have many friends. It can be very difficult to concentrate. So concentration and keeping attention and getting distracted can be a challenge when we listen. We teach our students to take notes. We teach them note-taking skills so they can listen but take notes because if we just listen, it can be very difficult. And also monotone voices. So we, we like voices to go up and down with expression, but sometimes people speak like this and it gets very difficult to follow and then we, and then we lose concentration because of the tone. So, okay, hey. So today we're going to look at rhythm. So you guys like music. So rhythm is everywhere, Faye. Right? So the clock, tick, 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 that's rhythm. Music has rhythm, do, 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 beat. The way we walk, the way we dance, the way we move, we use rhythm. We go to a certain beat. <laughs> Breathing has a rhythm, so many breaths per minute. And our heartbeat beats to a rhythm like music. Okay, Faye? So rhythm means up and down, up and down, like music and poetry goes up and down. And this is English pronunciation. English pronunciation goes up and down. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So some words are high and they jump out. Some words are important to hear and others are low. We don't need to hear them. So that's what we're looking at today, okay, Faye? So very quickly, I'm doing this very quickly so we can get to the practice, okay? So English versus Indonesian rhythm, so Faye. So English is what we call a stress-timed language, and Arabic is too, which means it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. 
So some words are stressed, some words are not stressed. So it goes like with them, okay? But Indonesian is a syllable time language, which means every syllable gets almost the same stress. So for example, an Indonesian speaker will say, I went to the bank, I went to the bank, five stresses. An English speaker would say, I went to the bank, I went to the bank with two stresses. So English is stress timed and Indonesian is syllable timed. So that's why when I speak Indonesian, my voice goes up and down like an English speaker and my wife laughs at me, she thinks it's funny. But when Indonesians speak English, they stress with the Indonesian mouth and then it's, it's not up and down. So that's what we're gonna to practice today for listening. Okay, Faye? Faye, one click. So here's an example. So the left side is the Indonesian speaker. I bought a car. It's four bong 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 bong. I bought a car. But the English speaker, if you look on the right, it says, I went to the bank with John. It goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. And we only stress when bank John. And that's all you need to hear to be able to understand meaning in English. So I bought a car, I went to the bank with John. Do you want to practice quickly? I went to the bank with John. And move your hands. I went to the bank with John. So it goes up and down. Okay, Faye? Right, are you ready to practice? So we are going to show you some words that have meaning on their own. These are the stress words. But they don't have any grammar with them. So they can't, they're not full sentences. So your job is to make full sentences for these, from these words and type them in the chat box, okay? So Faye, number one. So Andy went cinema Sunday Y. What is that in a full sentence with prepositions? with maybe articles, okay? So in the chat box, what is the full sentence for that? Whoa, is that Hill Pendry? Yes, Hill That is fantastic. So Andy went to cinema. There's something missing, uh, but almost. Wow, look at Pascal and Gunza. So, Faye? Andy went to the cinema on Sunday with his wife. So, if you hear Boo, Boo Desi, who's still there, Boo Desi, okay. if you hear Andy went cinema Sunday wife, do you understand the meaning? Yes. Uh... Somehow, yes, yeah, Andy. Yeah, yes. so, so we hear we hear Andy, we hear when, we hear cinema, we hear Sunday wife. We know the meaning without hearing to the, on, with is. Mm -hmm. So we can understand meaning with no need to listen for every word. So let's look at number two. Are you ready for the chat box? So make a sentence from wife likes eat bread breakfast morning. Wife like bed breakfast morning, wife likes to eat morning breakfast. Why wife like to eat breakfast? Why it's so good, so close. His wife likes to eat breakfast in the morning. Fantastic. You guys are so good. So Faye. So it could be his wife, could be their their wife. So my wife likes to eat bread for breakfast in the morning. So wife likes eat bread breakfast morning. You understand the meaning without the my to for in the. Okay. Next one. Diane saw friend front train station. What's the sentence for that in full? Diane saw friend in front of, yeah, almost, almost, yep. 
Are you cool? He's got it. No, he means you're close. Excellent. Uh, Faye? So Diane saw her friend in front of the train station. So we only stress Diane saw friend front train station. And our ears only need to hear those words to understand the meaning. Because we try and listen to every word and then we get panicked and we get we get confused because there's so many words, but we only need to hear some words. And number four. Ready? Last one. What usually do home evenings? What did you do at home in the evening? Also close. What did you do in the evening? So close, oh, so good. Oh, Attic call is so fast. Very nice. Well done, guys. So, Faye? So, what do you usually do at home in the evening? So, what usually do home evenings? And we say it like this. What do you usually do at home in the evenings? What do you usually do at home in the evening? So only what usually do home evenings jumps. The rest is what jia, what jia, what what do you usually do at home in the evenings? That is rhythm, and that is what we're talking about today to help our listening skills. Okay, Faye. So this is rhythm. Key words in English jump out. In Indonesian, they don't jump out because every syllable is stressed but they in indonesian they'll jump out if you use intonation and emphasis which is different but rhythm is the system of speaking so key words jump out and those words have meaning so you don't need to understand all the words to be able to hear okay hey so ready so if my student from, from Padang is learning English and they're learning pronunciation, they would say this, I would like to go home for dinner with my friends, which takes a long time because they're, they're speaking with an Indonesian mouth, which means they put stress on every syllable. I would like to go home for dinner with my friends. But an English speaker, will only stress some words. And it sounds like this. I'd like to go home for dinner with my friends. I'd like to go home for dinner with my friends. Okay. Would someone like to try that? Desi, would you like to, Boo Desi, would you like to choose someone to try that on the mic? I'd like to go home for dinner with my friends. Okay. Uh... I think Shyla looks ready. Uh, Belfa, 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 Firmanella. I'd like to go home for dinner with my friends. Belfa, are you there? No, I am. Okay. Yes. Can you? Can you? Uh, I'd like to go you, home for dinner with my friends. Yeah. Can you say this sentence? Dibaca in, ma'am. Yes. 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 Uh, let's hear how this sounds. I would like to go home for dinner with my friends. That's beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Delva. Oh, well, that's so nice because you stress like go home dinner friends. I'd like to go home dinner with my friends. Thank you, Belva. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, Mr. So number two. So again, my, my student will say, where are you going to go tomorrow? And stressing every syllable. But an English speaker would say, where are you going to go tomorrow? Where are you going to go tomorrow? So where, where are you going to go tomorrow is squashed. But going to go tomorrow. Where are you going to go tomorrow? Budesi, you want to try? Uh, where are you going to go tomorrow? Where are you going to go tomorrow? Wow, it's so <laughs> <laughs> And then the last one. Do you want to watch a movie? Do you want to watch a movie? That's every syllable. But we only stress one watch movie. And it would sound like, do you want to watch a movie? 
Do you want to watch a movie? Okay, who would like to try that one? Do you want to watch a movie? Do you want to watch a movie? Okay, is there anyone to try? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Do you want to watch a movie? A movie, a movie. Do you want to watch a movie? Oh, very nice. Do you want to watch a movie? Here, Penji. <laughs> very good. It looks like you're in a studio. I actually in my room. Oh, it's very cool. It looks cool set up. Do you want to watch a movie? Very, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Hey. So, we're, I'm just going to show you the words we stress in English rhythm. And don't, don't think you're going to learn all of this today in one hour. So, obviously, this just gives you an idea to help with listening skills, okay? So, in English, we stress content words, which are nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, because they have meaning. If you say, uh, I to the, that has no meaning, I to the. But if you say, uh, bank, oh, I know you're going to the bank because it's, it has meaning. And we also stress negatives because it's important whether it's not or yes. And we stress WH question words. Okay, so that, that's what we stress in English. These are the words that jump out when you listen to an English speaker, okay? Hey. So my first tip for strategy, okay? Just focus on key words. There are key words in English. In Indonesian, when I listen to Indonesian, I have to listen to every word because every word is stressed and then I get very confused. But in English, you don't have to hear every word. Just focus on those key words, okay? And we teach our student to imagine words jumping because you can visualize pronunciation. You can see rhythm in your mind. So, so listen for words that are higher pitch. They're louder in sound and they're longer as well. We say, I went, not went. I went, not went. Okay. Hey. We can actually, in English, when we're listening, we can ignore, we don't have to hear words that are lower, quieter, and shorter. We don't have to hear them. They're, they're important for grammar, obviously for writing and communication, but for listening, we don't have to hear those little words, okay? So we can ignore them because they're squashed and they're very fast, they're very fast. So contractions, articles, we don't need them, okay? So one, we teach our students to listen, to imagine they're at the top of the mountain, catching, catching the words at the top of the mountain. So they, they visualize words going up like a mountain, okay? Like uh, you say gunung, like a gunung. So my English stress wants to say gunung, gunung. It wants to go up and down, okay? Okay, are you ready? Okay. I would like to go to the cafe for coffee. I would like to go to the cafe for coffee. So the key words there, Faye. Like, go, cafe, coffee. So if you hear like, go, cafe, coffee, you know the meaning without hearing the other words, I'd like to go to the cafe for coffee. Okay, Faye? What do you like to do on the weekends? What do you like to do on the weekends? So that's fast speaking, when actually, Faye, all you need to hear is what, like, do, weekends. What do you like to do on the weekends? You can hear those words jump. You can see them in your mind, Faye. I bought a beautiful ring for my wife. I bought a beautiful ring for my wife, Faye. Bought beautiful ring wine. That's actually all you need to hear is four words. You don't need to hear eight words to understand. And just thinking about the words that jump out will really help your listening. Because many students learning English, they they hear, hey, what do you want to do at the weekend? And they're like, what, what was that? Because they're trying to hear every word, but actually, all they need to hear is what do 
weekend. What do you want to do at the weekend? What do you want to do at the weekend? What do we can do? Okay, I understand. So just the thinking about those key words. Okay. Okay, it's your turn for the chat box. Okay, so we stress nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, negatives, and WH questions. Okay, wonderful English students. There are four sentences here. For each sentence in the chat box, what are the key stressed words? Which words do we stress in English? You have one minute. Went, bank, went. Yay! Fantastic. Went, bank, went. How about number two? Wow, you guys are so good. Didn't ask book. Because didn't is a negative. So we remember we stress negatives. How about number three? How many times have you been to Madame? How many times have you been to Madame? Nice, very good. Remember we stress WH questions. How is a WH question? And many here is like an adverb, like how often, how many? Okay, how about number four? Can I have a cup of coffee and a small bowl of salto? Can I have a cup of coffee and a small bowl of salto? Can I have a cup of coffee and a small bowl of salto? Siamente copy then Soto Yankichil. You might Indonesian is terrible. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Faye, should we go through these? So went bank friend. So all we need to hear is went bank friend. Hey, where did you go yesterday? Went bank friend. Went bank friend. Oh, I understand. I went to the bank with my friend. We don't need to understand everything in English to be able to hear the meaning. Number two, so she didn't ask for a book. She didn't ask for a book. She didn't ask for a book. If we emphasize, we might say, I didn't ask for a book. No, she didn't ask for a book, but that's emphasis. That is extra stress because we choose to, okay? But we only stress for rhythm, didn't ask book, didn't ask book. Number three, how many times been madame? So you notice we stress being because it's a main verb, but we don't spread, we don't stress, we don't stress have because it has no meaning on its own. It's an auxiliary verb. It doesn't have any meaning. We don't say how many times have you? We don't, we say how many times have you been? Have you been? Because being has meaning. Have as an auxiliary doesn't have meaning. And number four, have cup, coffee, small bowl, sort of. So we, can I have, can I have, can I have? We stress have here because it's a main verb. It has meaning now. So can I have, can I have, can I have? We don't say, can I have? We say, can I have, can I have? So they're the stress words that you only need to hear. Hey. So what about the, what about the non-stress words? These are the ones that aren't important. So we don't stress prepositions. You need to write prepositions. You need to say prepositions, but unstressed, but you don't need to hear them unless it's about place. If I say, I will meet you in the store, on the store, or inside the store, behind the store, but then we put extra stress because it has meaning. So, so we don't stress prepositions, articles, verb to be, pronouns, or any helping verbs, okay? 
So things like this, this is how these sound. They sound like, we don't say with my, with my, we say with my, with my, with my. So you don't need to hear with my. If I, if I say I went with my wife, but you only need to hear I went wife. That's all you need to hear to understand. So with my, to the, to the, to the, we don't say to the, we say to the, to the. I'm a, I'm a. He was the, he was the, we don't say he was the. Have you, have you, have you tried? Have you been, have you seen? Didn't we say, did you, did you? We don't say, did you? Because it's actually very hard to say, did you? It, it makes your mouth tired. We say, did you, did you, did you? Because it's not stressed. Okay? So this is how these sound in the sentence. So I went friend, went friend. I went with my friend, I went with my friend. You guys want to try together? Ready? One, two, three. I went with my friend. I went with my friend. I went with my friend. And this one, have you tried Korean food? We only stress tried Korean food. Have you tried Korean food? Have you tried Korean food? Have you tried Korean food? What's your job, teacher? What's your job? I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Was he nice? Oh, he was the nicest person. He was the, he was the nicest person. He was the nicest person. And buy some food. Did you buy some food? Did you buy some food? Did you buy some food? Okay. Okay. So we're going to practice. Are you ready for some exercise? Okay. This is how rhythm works. Okay. So Faye, if you could click once. Now, this sentence just has three words and it has three stress words. Mice is a noun, eat is a verb, and cheese is a noun. So stress or no stress? Stress or no stress? Stress, these are stress words, okay? So are you ready? So the English has a, a beat like rhythm. And the beat of this is mice eat cheese, okay? Or mice eat cheese, or mice eat cheese. It, this rhythm has three beats, okay? So you ready? Mice eat cheese. One, two, three. Mice eat cheese. Mice eat cheese. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add extra lines to this with extra words, words that are not stressed, and our beat will stay the same. Our rhythm will stay the same, okay? So we'll show each line twice and we'll, we'll, say, we'll show the next line and we'll all say the line twice and then we'll move to the next one, okay? So this will be mighty cheese, mighty cheese. Then we'll go to the next one and say it twice. But keep the same beat. Ready? This is rhythm in action. Ready, let's go. So ready, one, two, three. Mice eat cheese. Mice eat cheese. Next. Mice eat cheese. The mice eat the cheese. The mice eat the cheese. Next. The mice are eating the cheese. The mice are eating the cheese. Next. The mice have eaten the cheese. The mice have eaten the cheese. Next. The mice have been eating the cheese. The mice have been eating the cheese. It's the same rhythm with the same three stressed words and the, have been, uh, have, the. These words are not stressed, so they don't get extra rhythm, okay? So from the first sentence to the last sentence, the rhythm is the same. And as a listener, you don't need to understand all the other words, okay? So should we, do, should we do the whole thing together? You ready? We'll just do one line each, one line each, one line each. You ready? One, two, three. Mice eat cheese. The mice eat cheese. The mice are eating the cheese. The mice have eaten the cheese. The mice have been eating the cheese. Okay, Desi, maybe you could choose one student and one number and they have to say that sentence. Okay. So one, two, three, or five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, Sheila, Amalia Sanders. Sheila, are you there? Sheila. Sheila. Yes. Okay. Can you? 
Can you practice this? This one? Okay. Okay, let's start. I said all work. Yes, yes, all work with with the the like the uh, Mr. Andy. Oh, all of them. Really? How about how about say one of so it could be one, two, three, four, five. How about how about Shyla does number four? Okay, number four. The match is even the Excellent. Excellent. Really good. So all I hear is mice, eat cheese. Really good. So you don't need to hear the other words. Nice. Budesi, who's next? Uh, next one is Arnella Putri. Arnella? Number three. Number three, Arnella Putri. Are you there? No. Mine's eating the cheese. Maybe she's eating her breakfast. Okay. What about Gina? Gina Rifda. Gina? Gina? Yes, Gina ma'am. Rifda. Okay. Can Gina you... number three. Yes, number three. The mice are eating the cheese. Very nice. Very nice. The mice are eating the cheese. Excellent. Faye, can we move on? So we're going to do this one together very fast, okay? So just one line each at a time. Faye? Students do homework. Students do homework. Students do homework. Hey, students do homework. The students do homework. The students do homework. Next one. The students will do homework. The students will do homework. Next. The students will do their homework. The students will do their homework. Next. The students will be doing their homework. So that is rhythm. That is the same rhythm. And we have modals, we have the verb to be, we have pronouns, we have articles, which don't get stressed. So when you're listening, you can't, you don't need to listen for all the words, okay? So let's do this one together. You ready? From start to finish. One, two, three. Students do homework. The students do homework. The students will do homework. The students will do their homework. The students will be doing their homework. Well done, guys. Well done. So next one. So let's have a little practice, okay? So because I've been talking a lot, so it's, um, let's have a little practice of listening skills, okay? So what I'm going to do, I am going to read you. Oh, I'm going to read you sentences at normal speed, fast speed my normal speaking speed. And I would like you to write the sentences you hear in the chat box, okay? So write what you hear me say. And remember, you don't need to hear everything I say to be able to understand the meaning, okay? So here's my first sentence. You ready to write? Let's go. Oh, I've lost my sentence. Oh, there they are. Ready, number one. I've seen this movie three times. I've seen this movie three times. Very nice, well done. I've seen this movie. Diana Zell, perfect grammar in there. I've seen this movie three times. I've seen this movie three times. See, even if you even if your sentence you wrote isn't grammatically correct it's still got the meaning. You still heard the meaning, so it's perfect. So I seen this movie, there's an I've in there, but you don't need to hear it, so well done. Okay, number two, are you ready? Number two. My wife does yoga in the morning. My wife does yoga in the morning. Very nice. Josh, my wife does yoga in the morning. Perfect. Wife yoga morning. Exactly, Shaila. Just there, the key words. Guys, well done. Very nice. So I'm speaking normal speed, 
but you're just listening for those key words and you understand the meaning, okay? Let's go for number three. Are you ready? Where are you going to go on holiday? Where are you going to go on holiday? Very nice. I like I like this one. Why have you gone on holiday? <laughs> why, why? I wish I could go on holiday. Guys, well done, what else? Budesi, your students also type very fast as well. <laughs> they are millennials. Uh, millennial generation. Multitasking and typing. <laughs> Guys, well done. Let's do number four, okay? Number four, you ready? What would you like to eat for dinner? What would you like to eat for dinner? Excellent, well done. Me and my day, perfect. Oh, there's so many coming in. Perfect as well, well done. And the final one, number five, okay. Are you ready to go, number five. Do you want to come with me to Padang? Do you want to come with me to Padang? I love abbreviations in the chat as well, with you, you for you. Guys, well done. Very nice. Well done. So, Faye, can you show the, can you click the next? So, I've seen this movie three times. You only need to hear seen movie three times because you know the context, this movie. You don't need to know the tense. You just hear seen movie three times. You know the context and the meaning. Faye? Wife, yoga, morning. So if you hear wife, yoga, morning, you know it's my wife because I'm telling you. So the context is clear. Yoga, morning. Now you have the action and the noun. You don't, and the time, you don't need to hear the other words. Perfect. So where are you going to go on holiday? That's every syllable. Where are you going to go on holiday? And it takes a long time. But you hear, where gonna go holiday? You hear gonna, you know it's future. And you hear go, you know it's travel and holiday. So these key words jump and it helps our ears. Fake. What would you like to eat for dinner? What like eat dinner? So we don't need, we don't need, uh, oh, I think I've made a typo. What would, so it should say, what would you like? I made a typo. What would you like to eat for dinner? We don't need to hear the would you because we know the context because we know the situation like eat dinner. Number five. Do you want to come with me to Padang? So we don't say do you want because it's very hard to say. We say do you want? Do you want? Because we our mouths want to get to want, come, Padang. That's what we want to say. That holds the meaning. So uh, uh, English speaking males jump to the key words very quickly. Okay. So, Budesi, before we do a final little bigger practice of listening, does anyone have any questions about rhythm? Because um, it's, it's a big subject. I, in my master's, I studied a whole semester on phonology, and most of it was about rhythm. So, it's not, it's a massive topic, but the idea of listening for key words words that jump out on the mountain is really helpful for our listening skills. But so before we do the practice, Budesi, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, if you have a question, you may ask directly to Mr. Andy, or you want to write down in the box, in the chat box. Do you have any question? I have a question, Budesi. Okay. Uh, your students in the 
chat in the workshop today. Uh, they're all English studying students, yeah, in the English mm. department. Mm. What do most of them hope to do in the future using English? Is it to become teachers? Is it for working in international businesses? What is what is the common common job from university students studying English? Okay, actually, for the student in polytechnic, because polytechnic is different with universities uh, level, so they need to be. They can be a kind of uh, interpreter, translator, or because we have two additional skill, uh, broadcasting and uh, translation. Mm, so good. at the at the fifth uh, semester, they will have uh, internship internship uh, activity. Mm. So they'll be sent to like um, trans translation translation bureau. Mm, fantastic. Wow. Or uh, like a TV station. Yeah. Like uh, TV TV R I TV trans trans TV, TV. and then the radio station. Wow, that's so good. Yeah. So they and they go to. Uh, several companies like mm -hmm. for being the um, uh, tra translate translator mm. well that's really good i think translation work is so important so people understand each other more thank you so Budesi, there's some questions here um from hill pendry does listening to fast rap music help improve our listening skills absolutely any any music listening to music helps our listening skills but you have to be a bit careful with music because in music lyrics they break they break grammar rules they'll do pronunciation and it's good for listening but don't try and learn grammar from songs because oh. they cheat we break we break grammar rules in songs so but listening to music and rap music is really good for developing listening skills because English music has rhythm, rap music has rhythm. So you're listening for the key words to understand the song. What is the meaning of the song by listening for the key words? So yes, rap music, any kinds of music where they're singing English, you'll hear rhythm. It's a great way to learn meaning from key words. And then Anissa said, how to make it easy to catch the point in listening? That's a good question. I, that's, there's two things. The most important is the context. What is the, who is the person I'm listening to? What are they talking about? That gives you context. And then it focuses your listening on what you're listening for. And then you're listening for key words. So without context, just listening to something we don't know why is not good for listening practice because our mind needs to focus on a picture so we know why we're listening, what we're listening for, then our ears can focus. So make sure you have some sort of context to catch the point. And remember, to catch the point, you don't need to understand everything. You only need to understand probably 50% of the words because they're content words, probably less, probably 40%. Because there are more non-stress words than stress words in English. Okay. And Angung, Angung was a singer. Yeah. Angung, <laughs> how can we predict the unknown phrase or word without panicking? Yeah, without panic. It's, it's difficult. Prediction, again, it's context. Prediction is important. We want to expect what we're going to hear. But I think the key thing is, is try not to panic when we listen. This is why learning communication skills for speaking are good. Things like, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Communication repair strategies. So do you mean that? What are you saying? Are you saying that? So we don't want to panic. We want to make sure we understand. And to be honest, I panic when I hear Indonesian from my mother-in-law because she speaks very fast at me and then I hear some words maybe about sickness or problem. And then I panic because I don't know the meaning because she doesn't give me a context. I need the context first. So context, try and be calm and learn strategies to, to help your communication repair to understand. Uh, 
how to memorize English vocabulary quickly. I don't, I don't think you can memorize English vocabulary or any vocabulary quickly. So if you, if you learn one word, research shows us that you have to hear it, speak it, write it, see it and spell it at least six or seven times before it goes to your long-term memory. So honestly, there's no quick way to learn vocabulary. You have to, you can't learn something without using it. So if you want to learn vocabulary, write it, read it, spell it, think about it, say it, and then it will move to your long-term memory, okay? Some students have strategies to learn vocabulary where they make images in their mind to remember, but that's not my field. Okay, um, should, we, should we continue? We can maybe do questions at the end. So I'm gonna, because I'm doing lots of speaking, I want the students to have a little practice activity, okay? Uh, yeah, we can we'll go on later. Yeah, we'll come back okay. to questions, so, okay. okay? So we're gonna do two practices if we have time, definitely the first one. So I am gonna read a paragraph to you, okay? And remember, there's no context yet, so I'm just gonna give you some information. And then when I finished, I want you to write five words that show what the content is. So for example, example, if I say, oh, I love nasi pachel because it's spicy, but sweet. And I think the vegetables are really good for my health. You could write nasi pachel, spicy, sweet, healthy. Five words that show the meaning of what you hear, okay? So I will read a paragraph, write five words to show the meaning of what I said, okay? Are we ready? Okay, ready. go to the next one. Okay, we ready? Let's go. One, two, three, I will start. Education is a gift. The more we learn, the more we know, the more we know, the more we think, the more we think, the more we can contribute to our society and to our local communities. Then we can make the world a better place for everybody. So can you write five words to, to summarize what I just said about? What five key elements came out to you? That was the and I'm not doing it again. That's nice. Oh, cool. Learn, no think, contribute, world. Yeah, that that summarizes the meaning yeah, of education. Learn, no think, contribute, world. Very nice. Education, gift, learn, think, contribute. That's nice, Chill. Really nice. So if I if I see the words education, gift, learn, think, contribute, I know the meaning now just from those words. Well, Tiara asked a good question. We'll we'll answer that one later. Education, learn, think more. Four words. Very nice. Okay, guys. Faye, if you could click the next one. So this is what I said, the education is a gift, the more we learn, the more we know, the more we know, the more we think, the more we think, the more we can contribute to our society and to local communities and we can make the world a better place for everybody. So there are, there's probably 50% of those words jump out and 50% you do not need to hear to understand, okay? Right, Faye, the next one. So this time I'm gonna speak for a little bit longer. And at the end, I would like you to write a one sentence summary of what I was speaking about, okay? This is obviously a good skill. So you're only listening for the key words to understand the gist, and then one sentence to summarize what I'm talking about, okay? So are you ready to listen? Let's go.
Okay, ready? I've always felt honored to live in Indonesia. The country is really interesting, the food is amazing, and the nature is so beautiful. But to me, it is the people that make this such a special country. Indonesian people are the kindest and most caring people I've ever met. They're also very creative and hardworking. I feel truly honored to live here because of the amazing people I meet every day. So what would be one sentence from all you heard to summarize what I said? One, one, let's have a full, full sentence, a full sentence with good grammar to summarize what I said, not just words. Indonesia is a beautiful country. Very nice. Pascal's good, good one. Excellent. Okay. Hey. So if you read that very quickly, so I've always felt honored to live in Indonesia. The country is interesting, amazing, nature beautiful. It is the people that make this such a special country. And then I talk about the people. So the main summary is about Indonesian people, but the key words are country, amazing, nature, but people, kind, hardworking. So, so just from listening for key, word, for key words, you can understand gist, you can understand meaning, and it helps us not panic because we don't have to listen for everything. Faye? Oh, Faye, can you go back? What's the name of the beach? Pantai Padang. Oh, Pantai Padang. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known the name. Okay, Faye. So let's do some just summary of tips. So develop our listening skills. And also, the, the when we develop our listening skills, we actually feel more confident. So I know we feel confident speaking, but when we listen and understand, we, we actually feel good. When I, when I understand more Indonesian, it makes me more confident to speak Indonesian. So, okay, Faye? So understanding rhythm helps our listeners, because even though we, we don't know everything about rhythm, just knowing about rhythm helps us listen. So, so listen for key words, the key words that jump out, Faye? So, I think important to remember, you don't have to hear all the words when you're listening to English, because in Indonesian, I, like I said, I have to listen to all the words because they're all stressed. But in English, there are only some of the words are stressed. Okay. So you're listening for words that jump out when they jump up in the air because they're louder and they're longer. Okay. So as I said, we imagine with our students, we imagine they're at the top of the mountain catching catching the words that jump out. So if you, when someone's speaking, if you see it as rhythm, some words are jumping out. Imagine the mountain, not the valley. The valley words, not important for listening. Hey, okay. And don't panic. So when someone's speaking or you're listening to a lecture or you're listening to something on YouTube, try not to panic. You don't need to understand everything. You're wanting to understand from keywords, the gist, the main meaning. And, and while well, I remember, if you do watch YouTube or English movies and you like with subtitles, subtitles are good, but try and listen. This is how my wife, she learned English well when she was younger. Um, she, listen, but look at the subtitles when you're not sure. Try not to just read the subtitles. But if you do English subtitles, it helps if you listen and then just look at the subtitle if you're not sure of something, then then listen again. If reading the subtitles doesn't doesn't help, because it's very difficult to listen and read at the same time. 
but if you listen and then read when you need it and then look back up again. Okay. And remember, listening is a skill, it's not a test. And so if you like sport or playing music or dancing, it takes practice and time. So I think any listening skill, keep listening to music, keep listening to the news, keep listening to lectures, try TED Talks because TED, TED Talk speakers have fantastic rhythm because they want to be clear. And you'll hear keywords jump out. Listen to good public speakers. Listen to Barack Obama, He's a, he has amazing rhythm because he makes sure keywords jump out that people can hear. Don't listen to Donald Trump, he's a terrible speaker. Okay. And also listen with your eyes and heart. We, we, we said at the start that gestures and body language are so important for communication. Um, when we speak with people, we, we can read their body language and even more so online to answer Tiara's question, because now we're online, we can only see people's faces. So when, we, when we're face to face, we can see whole bodies, we can see movement. Online, it's really important that facial expressions and gestures are more exaggerated because when we listen to people online, it's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy just because we don't need to communicate. We're just like looking. And it's very easy to think about dinner, to think about home time. So it's very important that we use gestures and facial expressions more to get the meaning across online. Okay. okay. So look at looking at the gestures is very important. Okay. Uh, you can read facial expressions. So if I do this, I, I don't need to say anything. You know my feeling without having me to say anything. So the way the way people speak will give you meaning often, okay? And you can hear feeling in voices and then we call it intonation. So intonation is the way we say something to express how we feel about it. So look at the word really. If I'm excited, I would say, really? But if I'm angry, I would say, oh, really? And if I'm happy, I say, really? So the way we say something will show the feeling and that helps you as a listener, okay? Okay, okay. next one. Oh yeah, so listen, listen with your heart because we understand people's feelings. So guys, that's it for me. It was so nice talking with you. Um, thank you for listening. Um, again, it's uh, listening is a skill, so it takes practice. There was no quick answer to how to improve my listening. Practice is key, but also now you know more about listening for keywords and why. Now, hopefully you think, you don't have to panic or worry or think, I can't understand because Mr. Andy speaks too fast. And when someone speaks fast, it's okay because you don't need to understand every word they say, okay? So thank you. I hope we have some time for some questions. Thank you for listening to me today and um, good luck with everything with your English studies. Okay, thank you, Mr. Andy. So now we have a question and answer session. So student, you can ask directly to Mr. Andy or you write down uh, your question in the chat box. Do you have any question? Can I also, before I finish, can I also say a big thank you to uh, Faye for helping me out today? Because it was it was very last minute for Faye. He was he got on in, he got orders from Busari, my wife, to help today. So thank you, Faye. <laughs> thank you, Faye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, I have a question actually for uh, you, Andy. So um, perhaps uh, in the students' mind, uh, um, maybe they 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 think that. Uh, by listening to the song or listening to the movie or listen to the movie, it's uh, enough for them to 
to support their uh, listening skill. So, uh, well, actually, uh, in my experience, when we listen to the listen to the movie, and then, uh, yeah, because most of the movie they have like a subtitle, and uh, sometimes it it makes uh, sometimes it 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 doesn't make us to 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 listen actively because mm. of the subtitle. So. So uh, what I mean is that um, it is uh, when the student uh, wants to study, uh, wants to study the listening skill from watching the movie or li- yeah, w- watching the movie, they need to listen actively. Mm. So what what do you think? Do you, because uh, mo- most of the student maybe they thought that oh I. I've been listening to many movies, and then they they thought that they uh, they have enough uh, skill in listening. Mm. But when they go back to the classroom, and then when we give them like a quiz, for example, shock. listening listening quiz, and then they get shocked because um, for listening quiz, actually, uh, whatever listening test is, the the audio will only be. Played once, mm. so they do not like we. If we practice uh, at in the classroom, yeah, they can play uh, many times. Mm. But in the when they take when they take the quiz, for example, they cannot do twice or uh, they cannot play the the audio for the uh, more than one. Mm. Like so, so what what do you think about this? Yeah, I think I mean, subtitles don't help your listening skills. Subtitles help your reading skills. So subtitles are to read and read quickly because they move. So if you use subtitles, it will help your reading skills because you don't listen, you read as they're talking. So if you want to improve, if you want to, it's a skill for fast reading, use subtitles. But if you want to improve listening with movies, either take off the subtitles completely or keep them there, but don't look at them unless you really need to. Like if there's slang or somebody says before a phrase we don't understand, use the subtitle to find the phrase and go back to the listening again. So the subtitles are good for reading skills, but turn them off if you want to practice listening or just use just use as a quick reference. Okay. And as for music and um, movies for listening, they're, they're all good to help practice, but we need variety. Um, so music is good to help you learn rhythm and key words. It helps because it, music is up and down. So it's good. For, it's good for like if you go to the gym, you exercise your body. If you listen to music, it exercises your ears to hear rhythm. So music is good. Um, and movies at TV are also good. But you also need uh, formal listening, like listening to a lecture listening to a presentation, listening to a public speaker, listening in a conversation. You need the variety because when we when we listen to a movie, when we listen to a lecture, our brain is actually doing different things. Mm-hmm. So if you listen to a movie, you're like, oh, what's the story? What's going to happen? Oh, no, I hope he loves her forever. But when you're listening to a lecture, you're analyzing, you're trying to remember, you're trying to take notes. So you need to improve listening skills. We need to do a different types of listening all the time to help our brain to adjust to different types of listening. Okay. But there's a, there's a few questions, Budesi, about uh, to do quickly or uh, fast. It's it, Learning language is a skill that takes time. Uh, there's no quick fix for learn, learning listening. There's no quick fix for speaking. Um, they take time and practice. Um, we often get questions, which is more important, grammar or communication? And I would 100% say both. You can communicate with friends on online with uh, slang language, young, young language. Um, but if you write a, an essay for university, you can't use that kind of language. If you want to talk to your friends in English, you can use simple language. If you talk to your doctor in English or professor, you'll need different types of language. So we need everything. Is 
Do we want listening? We need to listen to be able to speak. We need to listen to be able to speak and write. We need to be able to listen to to read. So they all, all the skills are connected and they take time. So my only advice would be don't put too much pressure on yourself to learn language quickly. It takes time, it takes practice. So try and have study buddies, try and have conversation days, try and have listening times where you're gonna to listen to a lecture or movie, then music, read, read a news article, then read a story. So try and do different things, but be, be patient with it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to learn too quickly. Language takes time. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. It should be fun as well. Language, language should be enjoyable. Yeah, it should be enjoyable, of course. And we have uh, some question here from the chat box from Pascal. Pascal, mm. uh, when we have a conversation with foreigner, sometimes he speaks too fast that I even cannot hear his main word. <laughs> Is that the polite way when we ask the foreigner to slow down their speaking? No, it's, it is polite. It's, it's, it's a huge part of speaking skills. So when we practice speaking, we need to learn the skills of speaking because I have, we, when we have new teachers coming from America or England, Australia, they come to Indonesia and then they, they get, they get a little bit angry sometimes because they said, I was speaking to my student and my student said, what, what, what? Like in English, that's impolite to say what, but in Indonesian saying apa is okay. So it's, it's just a translation. So if we don't teach students the skills of, sorry, could you repeat that? Um, I'm sorry, would you mind saying that again? Um, um, would it be okay if you repeat that? or repairing or clarification, like, do you mean, I'm sorry, I'm not sure, but are you saying, we have to learn those conversation strategies to help us understand when we talk to, to other people. But I think it's, I think we wouldn't say, could you slow down? We might say, is it okay if you speak a bit slower? Um, Cause I think as foreigners, when we speak in to, when we speak in English to someone English people can be lazy. We think everyone speaks English, it's okay. And um, it's important that when a foreign person speaks that they're, they're speaking in a way that's clear for the person they're speaking to. So that means we have to say, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Um, do you mind saying a bit more slowly, please? It's very important. We all have to learn the conversation skills together. Okay, so next question is about, are uh, they some of the question asking about uh, the the accent British and you you uh, British and uh, American accent. Mm. So uh, one student asked about uh, one or two two student asked about uh, the the way that you taught recently is that uh, with uh, UK uh, can is that the UK and U US. Uh, yes, yeah, it's changed a lot. The last, the last ten or fifteen years, it's changed. We because in England, in in Britain, there were there are hundreds and hundreds of British accents. There's not just one. Mm -hmm. And in America, there are thousands of different accents. So, thousands of American people speaking different accents as well. So, we used to say British English or American English, but now we talk about world English. We don't we don't teach. British English or American English or Australian, because what is a native speaker? Singapore, Indian, um, Pakistani, uh, Indonesian English. There's, in English belongs to non-native speakers in the world more than native speakers. There are billions of non-native speakers of English, more than English native English speakers. So English belongs to the world. Like an Indonesian student will speak to a Japanese student in English. A Chinese student will speak to a Brazilian student in English. More people use English that aren't native speakers. So we teach global English now or world English. So this is the American version. This is the English spelling. Australians say, say this. So students learn that the variety is good and there's not one that's better than the other. And everyone, if, if, if your students, are if you, you guys are learning British spelling, 
Um, and then in a in an email, you put the British spelling to someone that learned American. Nobody cares. Nobody, no, everyone understands the differences and it's a global language now. Unless you take IELTS or TOEFL, then you should, then you should mix, make, make sure the spelling is right. Yeah, and also there are also one student asked about uh, how to study listening for TOEFL and IELTS. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that, there's no strong answer for that. That's a lot of practice and yeah, uh, practice. note taking skills, but also you have to, to help with TOEFL and IELTS skills. It's, you have, it's important to be up to date with local topics as well, because often the topics are about student life and things that relate to students in different countries, news topics. So if, if you keep up to date with world topics, it actually helps with the context to understand what they're saying. But again, listening for the keywords and the gist helps and then you look at the details when it comes to the specific questions, but it's, it's not, it's lots of practice. And, and it, again, it's different. You, Budesi talked about listening to music, listening to movies. If it will help your listening those, but if you're taking TOEFL or IELTS, you need to listen to longer lectures or longer presentations to help you practice for TOEFL or IELTS. Listening to a two minute song won't help with a 10 minute TOEFL. Uh, lecture because it's easy to just lose concentration okay and the next question um from oh sorry gina uh i want to ask you so is listening music or which oh this is the 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 you have answered this question the next one is uh the next one is Dion. Um, are there any tips for easy English? <laughs> for easy <laughs> English and how to speak well to foreigner? For, for, how to speak. I, I think <laughs> what we said about accent pronunciation. Um, many years ago, people used to uh, be worried about, I want to sound like a British speaker. I want to sound like an Australian speaker. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. The whole thing about pronunciation and uh, accents is being a level that uh, can be understood. So we all have accents because our mouths are made that way from our first language. So when we speak to someone, we be ourselves, don't panic when we can't hear, learn communication strategies. So can you repeat that? Do you mean this? But then we can, we, we, it's important we listen to different accents because our ears and our brains adjust. But it's important that when we're speaking to foreign people or uh, non-English speakers in English, just being ourselves, um, not panicking, staying calm, being confident what we're saying. And we focus on the meaning of what we hear and also focus on the meaning of what we say. So when, when I first start learning Indonesian, my, I sound like a baby. I sound like a child because I just use two or three simple words, but the listener got my meaning. So when we're communicating with people in a, in a social environment, focus on the meaning before trying to do all the technical words and the, the correct grammar. And then when we move to different environments and get more confidence, then we can try different vocabulary and grammar. But, but be yourself and, and everyone, because English is a global language, everyone is much more patient when they talk to different people. We, we use English at work and study and from all different nationalities. So people, it's so, around the world now, people know different accents, they know different styles of speaking, they know different grammar errors, but know the meanings and it's it's all okay. Everyone's just to just try and communicate, be confident. But I think now also enjoy language because now with COVID and you know things going on in the world, it's even more important than ever that people communicate because now we can't travel so much. We can't see different people. So learning to communicate online and talking more with people from other countries is, is more important than ever. And you guys are the future. You're the future of Indonesia leading the way in the world. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, the next question from Nurul Hafiza. When we are listening and we need to write the summary, 
Do we just need to write the word or directly into the sentence? Or, or words. It's, it's impossible to listen and write. Like in the old days, dictation. You do dictation, mm -hmm. the teacher reads and you try and write everything. That's almost impossible. So, and you, you want to take notes like you listen to rhythm. You write <laughs> keywords. And then, so when you're, do, when you're listening to a lecture and Brudesi is, is giving you a lecture, you don't try and write everything she says because by the time you finish the sentence, she's five sentences ahead in her speaking. And then we get lost. So write keywords. So whatever the keywords you hear, write those down. And then as soon as you finish the class, put those words into sentences in your own notes. And then it becomes clear because you've heard them, written them, and then summarize them. And that's the way you learn. But yeah, don't try and write full sentences as you're listening. Listening and writing is very hard to do. Okay. So, um, one last question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one last question from... <laughs> sorry, that's my daughter. <laughs> from... Uh, because there are so many questions here, and then they have similar questions. <laughs> um, oh, this is about, uh, this is from Alfizra Muhammad, yes? Muhammad Rai, Alfizra Muhammad Raihan. I really like listening to music, and I usually study by listening to music. But when I wanted to interpret the lyrics, it sounded different and very standard if translated into Indonesian. Mm -hmm. Do I have to look up the keyword to learn the meaning of the song? <laughs> so this is well, I think song, songs are, and, uh, is a good way to learn the meaning because songs have feeling to them. So you only need to hear some of the keywords in the song and you can kind of understand the meaning. Is it a love song? Is it a heartbreak song? Is it an angry song? Is it a political song? So you only need to understand a few words to understand the meaning. But if you translate English songs to Indonesian or Indonesian songs to English, they lose the meaning a lot because they sound very strange in the other language. Because in music, we cheat. We write things for the, for the impact of the music. But if you translate it, it doesn't work so well. So I think listen many times and pick out the, pick out the feeling of the song from keywords. That will give you the meaning of the song. But, but it's easy now, because now watch the video for the song and you'll see what it's about. And then you can connect the visuals with the lyrics and that helps you understand the meaning. I had my students translate the song, um, Oh, to hand into dear, into dear. And they translated that into English. In English, it sounded very strange. <laughs> oh God, I miss her. <laughs> <laughs> so actually uh, uh, we can say that the student need to improve the listening skill by uh, uh, maximize all the learning tools they, they have today for example like from the internet the TED, the TED talks and not only from the movie and from the songs right and then they need to to use all the facilities they they have today is that uh, that's the the things that i uh noticed from uh, your uh, lecture today and then also um the student need to be not to not need to be self need to have self-confidence so do not get panic mm. and then yeah they, they need to uh uh, they need to uh, to have uh, self enough self confidence to in 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 this listening because uh, for example um, <clears throat> listening uh, skill is very important you should, uh, freak, uh, especially if they want to be like translator or interpreter mm -hmm. right so, so because if they have uh, good in listening skill and then they they can. Uh, they can be, uh, who knows, they can be an uh, interpreter one day. Mm. Yes? And, and so, so this skill is very important. So, um, they do not, they, they, they need to, like you said before, they need to uh, 
uh, pay attention uh, more on the uh, on the rhythm of the uh, mm, words, English uh, sentence uh, in English. Yes, and that's the key. That's the key points that we studied today. Yeah, listen for the key points. Don't panic because you can't hear every every word. Yes. If you can't hear the word, it's probably it's not important for the meaning. It's important for grammar. And I like you said, don't don't panic. But it's also important that to know that mistakes when we learn language are okay. Mistakes mean we're we're learning. Like if anyone plays, I used to play tennis. When I first hit the ball, I missed it, and then I hit it, and it went over the fence. And then I hit it into my head, but then I practice and practice, and eventually we start hitting the ball. And it's the same with um, language. If we don't practice and make mistakes, we'll never learn. So keep practicing. It's okay to. That's why it's important people study and talk together, so they can all make friends can make mistakes together and then learn in a nice, relaxed environment. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we have. Bu, Bu Dini or Ibu, Ibu yang lain? Other... Can, I, can I just say, I think Tiada's asked the question a couple of times about why are gestures and facial expressions so important online? Oh, Maybe, yeah, yeah, the last one. Yes. Yes, yeah, because the, it's about, they say that 60 or 70% of communication is physical. Mm -hmm. it's facial expressions, it's body gestures, it's, you know, how uh, the way we move, people understand that's communication. So, online we communicate very differently we can't we it's hard to read people so it's even more important that like when we talk to someone face to face and we smile online it's even more important they see the smile because we only see this much of someone so online communication it's even more important that people can see how we feel and what we mean because we can only see we're not in the same room we have to see how someone feels so. okay sorry okay so no more no more question students yeah because most of this uh, question up there has similar similar question and for bu uh sil bu dini or bu kotrini do you have any uh Any more comment? Ibu, Ibu Dini, Ibu Sil. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Thank you, Andy. Oh, it's my uh, pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for listening for so long. Yeah, and I think that uh, we also consider that uh, online game also can uh, improve our students' <laughs> listening skills. Because uh, today, I think, uh, um, yeah, especially for the boys, uh, they like uh, playing online games today. And yeah, they can, uh, yeah, practice their English on that game. Actually, it's a, it's a good point. And the reason is because it's visual and listening at the same time. So the brain likes to hear and see at the same time. And it does connect. So it is good. But, Budini, I don't know if the same for you guys, but we have a lot of our students' parents, they are worried about their children because they speak in game language. Oh, so yeah. Their parents, <laughs> and they're actually a bit worried that they're using game language to speak to their teachers or their parents. So we've got to make sure that there's game language and then there's family language, which is different. Yeah, it's really different. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it's not good. I think it's not good for the children, for the kids. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's good so. that they, they learn different environments. When I'm with my friends in the game, we use this kind of language. But when I speak to my mum and dad or my teachers, or I use this kind of language. So as long as they can switch, that's important. That's right. Well, actually, we have one last uh, question. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so from Fadli Laylatul Kadri. Uh, sometimes we often lose focus when a speaker speaks something in English so that we cannot interpret the sentence he calls. The question is how can we still understand the meaning of the speaker even if the speaker speaks too quickly? 
And we have to be we have to be honest with speakers and when we don't understand we have to say I'm sorry could you could you say that again please if we say um sorry what was that if we say um sorry what did you say that usually means the speaker thinks we we weren't listening so they say it again the same speed but if we say i'm sorry would you mind saying that again we know that they didn't understand what we said so it's much better to say, I'm sorry, would you mind saying that again? Or do you mind saying it a bit more slowly? And then the person takes action the next time they speak. If we just say, what was that? We, we just think they misheard. So we say it at the same speed. Mm -hmm. So it's much better to say, I'm sorry, would you mind saying that again? Or the clarification skills I mentioned before, um, we say things like, sorry, do you mean you went to Padine? Sorry, do you... Do you mean, did you say that you met her last week? So we clarify what we heard before we answer the question. They're important skills to learn. So I think there is no more question, I think, from the student. And from Ibu Sil and Ibu Kotrini, do you have any question or comment? Ibu Silvia and Ibu Kotrini. Okay, now. Okay, so uh, students, uh, maybe because we have uh, um, uh, at the end of the session. So uh, thank you very much for uh, your time today, students, and also especially for from the speaker today, Mr. Andy Han. Thank you very much for <laughs> your time your sharing session with us today. It's very uh, pleasure to have you and to uh, share the meaningful knowledge with our students today. Thank you. It's nice of you to say. Honestly, it was my pleasure to be with you today. I really enjoyed the time we had together. So thank you yeah. for inviting me. So hopefully one day you can visit us in Padang. and I hope so, yeah. <laughs> and have a taste the real Nasi Padang. Yeah. Real Nasi Padang, yeah. And yeah. I'm stuck in Surabaya. Yeah. But there is no Nasi Padang in Padang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have Nasi Padang here, actually. We call it Nasi. Yeah. Nasi Ramas. Nasi Ramas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Andy Han. And thank you. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we end this session and oh, maybe do we have time for a group screenshot uh, oh yes no. yes can we put in it? yes so later on I will share the link for the YouTube uh, today to oh, yeah thank you yes to Mr. Andy so yeah. Yeah. turn on your camera or <laughs> okay turn on your camera Okay. Okay. But hold on. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 Thank you, Mr. Uh, Andy. So, students, so, uh, Thank you very much for your attention today. Uh, don't forget to fill the tenant list in the the link that Miss Seal has been given to you in the chat room at chat box. Yes. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Andy. Thank so, you, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so uh, send my regard to. Sorry, also. <laughs> I will do definitely. And regards to everyone's families there. Stay, stay well, everyone. Stay safe. Yes, yeah, stay safe. Okay. Good luck with everything. Okay. Bye -bye. See okay, see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. 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 Waalaikumsalam.